boy head for both sides. Okay. That looks good. And then kind of just divide it up by two for the x. Divide it by two? And for the x squared, I just, I guess that was like two times two. Okay. Um, all right, how about this one? What would you get for x then? Try anything differently? Okay. okay, it's a difference of squares, isn't it? So, um, so we can factor this as x plus 2 times x minus 2 equals 0. And we set each of the factors equal to 0. And then we solve for x. Subtracting two on both sides, adding two on both sides. Okay, same thing could be done here. You can factor this as x plus three and x minus three. Set each factor equal to zero. Subtract three and add three. It is, turns out a lot easier, since we don't have an x term in the middle, you know, forcing us to factor it, uh, it is a little easier to do it the way that, uh, the way that Nathan was, was doing. You just put the four on the other side, and then, well, what did he do after that? How do you get x equals two? Divide by two? Divide by two on both sides? What did he do on both sides? Or if we had x squared equals 9. Okay, well we definitely don't divide 9 by 2 to get 3, right? There is some kind of a separating into 2, right? Yeah, finding the square root. So we're, we're not dividing it into 2. We're not finding what plus itself equals whatever, equals 9, equals 4. We are saying what times itself equals 9. Not, not separating into two things added together, but it's separating into two things that multiply together. So it's kind of like the multiplic multiplication equivalent of dividing by two. We're taking the square root, splitting it into two identical factors. Okay, so we're taking the square root of both sides. OK, but this way we wind up with 3. And this way we wind up with negative 3 and positive. So, shouldn't we wind up with the same answers both ways? We should, yes. Whenever you do an equation or you do a problem two different ways, you should come to the same conclusion. Otherwise, something's not true. All right. Well, the answer to this would be when you take the square root of both sides, just need to say plus or minus three. Those are both of the square roots of nine. Okay. Um, and here is the reason. Because erase these square roots. This is a, an equation, right? How do we know it's an equation? It has an equal sign. Okay, we're looking for the solution to this equation. Can somebody just define what the solution to the equation means? x squared equals 9. What does it mean when I find the equation to that? Find the solution to that equation. Like how are we trying to find it? Or? Not how to find it, but what is it? Not like what number is it, but what does it mean to find the solution to that equation to any equation? I'm kind of confused on what you're trying to do. When you get done finding the solution, will you find like a picture or will you find like a, 
a rock. Like what will what will the solution look like? It'll be a number. Okay, we're getting there. What what will that number do? What can what properties One does that do? To x. Yeah. It will come out to be nine. It'll come out to be nine. You got it exactly right. That was right. So, the solution or a solution to this equation to any equation, you plug it in and it solves it. Right. It satisfies it. It makes it true. Right. If we were to plug in five there, that wouldn't work. Five squared is twenty-five. That's not going to be true. Um, but if we put in three there, that's that was pretty natural, right? Three squared is nine. Agreed. All agreed there. Okay. Um, but there's another number that we can plug in for x. It gives us nine. What is that number that we can plug in for x? And it still gives us a positive nine. Negative. If we put negative three in there, remember we're squaring. The, the whole thing, whatever it is we plug in for x, we square the whole thing, which means we multiply it by itself. Multiply negative 3 by itself, you get negative 3 times negative 3. That's equal to positive 9. So when we take the square root of both sides in an equation, when, when it's like our idea and we implement the taking of the square root of both sides, normally we would say the square root of 9 is 3, but when we're start, trying to solve an equation, when we're trying to find a number that we'll plug in for x and make the equation true, it turns out that 3 squared is 9, but also negative 3 squared is 9. So we need to include both. Okay. Um, so definitely treating it like a difference of squares and setting each factor equal to 0 will work. It got the right answers, right? got the right solutions. But it is a little bit faster, uh, quite a bit faster, really, if we just add 4 to both sides and take the square root, x is plus or minus 2. We take the square root, x is plus or minus 3. Let's continue that idea. Try um, 2x squared minus 15, 0. Do you like your solving for x except for the first, do the same kind of steps to get x squared by itself, and then we'll take the square root of both sides. The plus and the minus. Let's uh, pick up pens and pencils and things and, and, and put them on papers and you know wake up, write it down. Go ahead, write down what I put on the board and before we get x squared alone by itself and then take the square root of both sides. Okay. Uh, might be a different way, a little bit of a faster way to solve this. Here's the idea. Since there's not an x term, we don't 
you kind of think of it as you don't have to factor this thing out um, and get it one factor times another factor equals zero and set each factor equal to zero and then solve for x in each equation. Since there's only an x squared, we can get x squared by itself just like we would if it was any other variable, if it was just a regular x, not x squared. Get it by itself, just like if it was 2x minus 50 equals 0, we add 50. Okay, and then we divide by 2, just like normal. Nothing, no big new ideas here. But now, we take the square root of both sides. And remember, what we're really doing is trying to solve the equation, trying to find the solution to the equation, trying to find a number any number that will plug into x and make this equation true. So if we were to plug in clearly 5, 5 squared would be 25, but also negative 5 times negative 5 would be positive 25. So that's why we include both, because they're both solutions. They both make the equation true if we plug it in. Okay. Okay, but to this point, we don't know what x is. It's kind of a mystery. What, what could solve this equation? What number could work in this equation? Turns out two of them could. Positive five or negative five. Um, and then I know that they're easy enough that you could probably figure it out, just kind of guess, just throw some numbers in there. Oh, I, I got it, figured it out. I'm trying to make it easy at the beginning so that when it gets to be more difficult, all we do is, is take the same approach as when it was simple when we could see why it worked. Right? So please do get t squared by itself, and then take the square root. And then when it gets to be more complicated and, and seemingly more strange and maybe more mysterious, uh, it'll be less so because we paid attention and, and listened to it what I was trying to explain to you at the beginning. Okay, so we add 500. Okay, add 500. And, okay, keep and going. And then divide by 5. And then 5, that's great. Okay, why'd you get t equals 10? Because 10 times 10 is 100. Yes, you're right. T ten, or 10 times 10 is 100. Does anything else times itself equal 100? Danielle? Negative 10. Negative 10. Too good. That's why we do plus or minus. Okay. Every time we take the square root, we do plus or minus because a positive can multiply by itself to make a positive, and a negative can multiply by itself to make a positive. more than a, a couple skipping steps trying to make it faster and also making it wronger. Okay, so take it nice and slow until you are absolutely uh, never making mistakes, then start skipping steps. Alright, so what is the step we can take first? Yeah? Subtract 32. Subtract 32. We like 32 to be over there. 2t squared equals negative 32. So that's one thing. A lot of you had positives on the other side, and you should have negatives. So watch out for that. Now what? Yeah? Divide by 2. Divide by 2. So it's going to give us negative 16. Anybody else want to take the reins? Yes. If you like, take this. Okay, so here's where things get interesting. We take the square root of both sides. How many of you, if you got here, did this? Just put plus or minus four. Okay, well, let's think about that. We are looking for a number that will 
will make this equation true. Okay. Now, can anybody tell me why four doesn't work? What's that? You put four in there. You square it. Four times four is positive sixteen. Okay. What about negative four? Also gives you positive sixteen. Negative four times negative four, still positive sixteen. So what do we do? We need some kind of number that multiplies by itself and gives us a negative number. Do you know of any like that? No. Now, later, we will invent numbers that do that. But for now, we just say there are no numbers that we know of that will plug in for t square, you know, multiply by itself, and give us a negative number. All numbers that we know of, when you multiply them by themselves, we get a positive number, because there's only two kinds of numbers, really, when we consider positives and negatives. It's positives and negatives. If you multiply a positive by itself, that's what squaring is, you get a positive. If you multiply a negative by itself, that's what squaring is, you get a positive number. You get a positive 16. So we have no numbers that can square, that can multiply them by themselves and give you a negative number. So, what about the solutions to this equation? What are we going to do about the solutions? What are they? What is it? Or are there any? Can you think of any? How many can you think of? I can't think of any. When we're, when we're dealing with numbers that we have been dealing with since grade school, all the numbers that we know about, and we've, we've learned about a lot of them, positives and negatives and, and square roots and decimals and fractions, and I can't think of any number that can multiply by itself and at least solve the problem of being a negative number. Multiply by itself to give you a negative number. I can't find any, I can't think of any. So there's no solutions. Pardon the interruption, there is a blue hot. Okay, so, of all the numbers we know of, none of them will solve this equation, none of them will satisfy this equation, none of them will make this equation true. So this equation, as far as we're concerned, has no solutions. There's no way to solve it. Um, and for right now, we don't have to worry. There are numbers, but we can have to invent new numbers, because all of all the numbers that we know of, uh, which is a lot, uh, none of them will solve this equation. So we just say no solutions. So you gotta watch out when you take the square root of a number, you have to think about what number will multiply it by itself to give me uh, whatever I'm looking for it to give me. That's why back here in the first place we discovered, oh my god, it's, they include plus and minus, positive and negative, because both of these will square to give me 100. Both of these will square to give me a positive 25. But when we ask ourselves the same question, what number will multiply by itself to give me negative something? Well, there aren't any.
right now? What solution did you get? I didn't get a solution. You got no solution. Why is that? Can you give me to where you got that? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we're negative 108, yeah? Squared by 36. M squared equals negative 36. So I'm sure you, get, you guys are there. So can you explain to me why there's no solutions other than it looks really similar to the last problem we did? Nothing equals that. Nothing times itself. Nothing times itself equals that. Mm -hmm. What about that is causing the big issue? The negative. The negative. If we try to multiply something by itself and get a negative 36, Sixes can multiply themselves to get 36, but they can't get negative 36. It's not possible. Um, if we try m equals 6, x times 6 is 36. If we try negative 6, negative 6 times negative 6 is also positive 36. So neither of those work, and there are no solutions. Period. You get nowhere with that. Let's see. still the same. We'd like to get the x squared by itself on one side, a number on the other, and take the square root of both sides, and figure out what number works for x. Okay, so just as with these simpler equations, we want to get the, the variable. We want to get the variable by itself, which means if you want to get all the variable terms on one side and the numbers on the other, then you want to isolate the variable itself. So, said maybe a little bit differently, we're going to get the x squareds together on one side, the numbers on the other side. So, how can we do that? Yeah. Add 2x squared to both sides. So, you get 5x squared minus 35 equals 45. We're getting there because now there's no x's, x squareds over here, they're all over here. Danielle? Can we do add 35? Add 35 to both sides. x squared equals b. That's true. Divide by 5. And what do we get when we divide both sides by 5? 16. We've got x squared equals 16. That means we're looking for a number that multiplies by itself. Give us 16. Does such a number exist, Daniel? Plus and minus 4. Two numbers exist that do this job. Plus 4, square it, you get 16. Negative 4, negative 4 times negative 4 is also a positive 16, so both of those are solutions. Plus and minus 4. Say somebody, uh, a friend of yours missed class and they wanted you to help them out, right? And we could summarize this first part of uh, taking the square roots idea. What, what, what are some things you would tell them? Like how, how to solve these equations with x squared to them? Let's try and summarize it for our friends because we can explain it to them. It's also good for us. It helps us break it down. And Understand it more clearly when it's in our own words. So, what you say we have done. What is it if you saw a new equation, you were supposed to solve it? What is it that you would do? Okay, so at the that's kind of at the very end, right? That would be uh, taking the square root. You know, keep in mind I'm talking generally. Like, if I gave you a new equation, what would you you'd look at it and you would try to do what? You'd have some kind of overall, this is what I'll do first. Yeah? Get the x squared on one side. Get the x squared on one side by itself, like you would 
like any other equation you're trying to solve, right? If it was just x's and not x squared, you're trying to get the x by itself. So just before you take the square root, you want to uh, get the x squared by itself. Okay, maybe before that we could say like, uh, get the x squared term on one side. numbers on the other. Because maybe what this means is get the x squared by itself is maybe divide by the coefficient of x squared. Divide by that number that's being multiplied by x squared. That's what coefficients are. They're the numbers that you multiply by variables here. The coefficient of x squared is 5. The coefficient of m squared is, just before the last step, the coefficient is what? Three. Three coefficient, the number that's multiplied by the variable. Here the coefficient was two. Here the coefficient was five. Here the coefficient was two. We're trying to cancel out the coefficient by dividing. And then we'll take the square root of both sides. So maybe this could be like a step one. We get the x squared term. On, on one side by itself, and the numbers on the other side. Two, a little sub-step. What we mean by that is get is divide by the coefficient, and at the last, which turns out to be a step three, we're going to take the square root of both sides. So if you have something that's squared, and you want to get that by itself, you can take the square root of that. Between two and three. Right. So let's try that. Let's try 2.5. Let's see. 2.5 times 3 equals 5. Yeah. is pretty pretty too big. What about 2.3 <laughs> .3 times 2.3? That's better, but it's still too big. 2.2. Uh, there's a square button there. Why don't we just go ahead and square that? It's easier. That's too small. So, um, so somewhere between 2.3 and 2.2. Right, bigger than 2.2, but smaller than 2.3, maybe 2.25. Square that. That's pretty close. Okay. So we can just kind of keep messing around with it and squaring this number until we get closer and closer and closer to 5. And hopefully the, the thing that I want you to see here is yeah, there is no whole number that squares to 5, but there is some number. There is some square root of 5, right? Like some decimal that will multiply by itself and give you 5. And we can get a pretty good approximation if we press the second button and we press that same square button. Then we give us a square root of 5. And that's going to be pretty close if we take this 2.2366. And you square it. That's really, really close. It's just like, what is the 
tens, hundreds, thousands, tens, hundreds, thousands, millions, <coughs> billions. It's like two billions away from being five, which is pretty close. So we could say it's approximately 2.236. X is approximately, if you make your equal sign squiggly, it's approximately 24 from both sides, divide by 4, take the square root of both sides. What do we get for solutions to this equation? Okay, can you come up with a conclusion? I said x equals positive or negative square root of negative 6. Okay. 
That's true. It is equal to positive or, positive or negative the square root of negative 6. What kind of number is that? Can you think of any? Do you have any input? What? A negative number? OK, we'll try a negative number. Will, I, will some mystery negative number times itself, right? This is the definition of the square root. Will it come out to be negative 6? No, what will it come out to be? Positive something. You get, you get positive 6. Right? In the same way we can get positive 5. Can we get negative 6? No, so I kind of double, double up on the, the confusion. Right? When we take the square root of a number that doesn't have a perfect square root, a number like uh, 4, 9, 16, 25, these have nice square roots. Okay. Um, then you know, we come up with those answers. We come up with plus or minus 4, plus or minus 3, and so on. But in this case, when we take the square root of it, a, a, uh, a 6, well, what, what number is that? And, and on top of that, when we take the square root of a negative, what kind of number multiplies it by itself to make a negative? There are no numbers that do that. At least not numbers that we're accustomed to, familiar with at this time. So we cannot multiply to make a negative number. So it turns out, even though we've got this new idea of oh, the square root of 5, that there's some number that exists that is the square root of 5, that's true. But there's still no number that's the square root of a negative number. That's not possible. So there's still no solutions. square roots. Um, get too far. Uh, what does it mean? What does x minus 8 squared mean? x minus 8 times x squared. It does not mean x squared minus 8 squared, right? And I just distribute the square into the parentheses. It means x minus 8 times x minus 8 squared. I'm not saying to do that. I'm just reminding you that that's what it means. You guys just work on it for a minute and see what ideas you come up with. What will, what will you choose to do? So I've just been able to get around to a few of you, and I see this. Is that correct? Yes, we just talked about it before I asked you to try something. So yeah, it is the same. So that must be correct, right? We haven't done anything that's false. It's still true. If we multiply these together, we'll get uh, x squared minus 8x, and then we distribute the negative 8, we get minus 8x plus 64. x squared minus 16x plus 64 equals 49. Okay, so it's all multiplied out. This is like the kind of equation that we would have solved in the test that we took recently. What would we do next? The way it is now, 
we flip, okay, let's say that we subtract, well, if we want to cancel out the 64, we definitely have to subtract mm -hmm. 64. So we'll get a negative 15. Okay, then what would you do then? Remember, if you're looking at an equation like this, the very first thing I said that was a very important thing was to have a zero on one side. So if we did that, we would just subtract 49 from both sides, so we have zero over there. So negative 15 equals, or wait, we got positive 15. What would you do then? Then you know? Find something that multiplies the 15 and subtracts the negative 15. Okay, and what would that be? 1 and 5, or 1 and 15. Negative 1, negative 15. If we multiply this out, we'll get x squared minus 16x plus 15. We set each factor equal to zero. Equals positive 15. Those must be correct. I mean, we, we multiplied it out. That was true. Um, we put these two together. That is negative 16x. Um, we subtract 49 from both sides, that's certainly still true. If we subtract 49 from this side, we have 0. Subtract 49 from 64, we have 15. Um, factor it out, if we multiply these together, we get exactly this, so that's also true. If we set each of these equal to 0, that must be true because we're multiplying something times something else and we're getting 0. So either this is 0 or this is 0. And then we're solving each of those equations for x. So it must be true. I must be able to put 1 up here. That would be 1 minus 8 is negative 7. Negative 7 squared is positive 49. That must work. 15, 15 minus 8 is 7. 7 squared is 49. So, yeah, we did find the solutions. Nothing wrong with that. But, there's a faster way, an easier way. Notice when I plug in um, 1, or I plug in 15, I either got 7 or I got negative 7, right? Does that make sense? Remember when I plugged in 1? 1 minus 8, 1 minus 8 was negative 7. And 15, 15 minus 8 was positive 7. Looking at this equation the way it looks, does that make sense? That that's what would wind up in the parentheses? Why? Danielle? But why does it make sense that we would get negative 7 or positive 7? Whether I put in 1 or I put in 15, like what I wind up with is a 7 or I wind up with a negative 7? We're trying to get 49 on the other side. We're trying to get 49. So whatever's in the parentheses should come out to be something that squares to get 49. Right? Whatever's in the parentheses should wind up coming out to be something that squares to give us 49. So from the very beginning, we can take the square root of both sides. This thing, it's not just an x squared, it's an x minus 8, but it is something squared. Something is getting squared to give us 49. This thing right here, whatever it comes out to be, whatever x causes it to be, it should be something that squares to give us 49. So we take the square root of both sides. The square root and the square cancel each other out. And on this side, what's the square root of 49? Plus or minus 7. So when that happens, we really have x minus 8 could be 7. That makes sense because x minus 8, whatever x minus 8 is, should come out to be 7. So then when we square it, we get 49. Or x minus 8 equals negative 7 because Whatever's in this parentheses should come out to be, if it's not 7, it should come out to be negative 7. So when we square negative 7, we get positive 49. That's what the equation says. And we add 8 to both sides, we get 15. Or we add 8 to both sides, 
uh, in this equation and we get a positive one, negative seven plus eight is one. So either 15 or one will solve the equation. And it was a lot less work than what we have written in red. The idea here is the squaring, the square, and the square root cancel each other out. Take the square root of a square, and you cancel them out, and you just get what was here, whatever was being squared. If you can do that, and you take the square root of the other side, then it's your life a little bit easier. Let's try another one. So again, we could write this as x plus 2 times x plus 2, and right? a lot like this. Right? And it, will, it will work, because it will be true. Um, it would be a lot less work, be a lot less hassle, if we just take the parentheses as it looks. Take the square root. You know, the square root and the square cancel each other out. We take the square root of this side. What's the square root of 16? 4, just 4. Plus or minus 4. So, think about it for a second. We're saying x plus 2 needs to be 4. Or x plus 2 needs to be negative 4. Of course, that makes sense because x plus 2, whatever it is, you know, whatever x causes it to be, we're going to square it, and we're going to get 16. So whatever's inside the parentheses needs to come out to equal something that squares to give 16. So this must come out to be 4, or this come out to be negative 4. That's what we're saying here. What's inside the parentheses could, about, come out, could come out to be 4 or negative 4. We'll set up two equations. We'll subtract 2 on both sides. So this will give us 2. This will give us negative 6. We'll go back to the beginning. 2 plus 2, putting 2 in here, 2 plus 2 is 4, 4 squared is 16, negative 6. Negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 squared is positive 16. what that means when you take the square root of something like the square root of 16. What is, what's the square root of 16? 4. It's 4. Why? 4 times 4 is 16. Because 4 times 4 is 16. So if you come over here and probably you have written x 3 times x minus 5. And just can, cancel the square and the square root. Okay? But what you're saying is if the square root of this is this, I should be able to take this and multiply it by itself. Can I multiply this by itself and get 3 times x minus 5? I could multiply it by itself and get 9 times x minus 5 times x minus 5. 9 times x minus 5 squared. Or if I wanted to do that, I could, uh, I'd have to take the square root of 3 and the square root of x minus 5. So the square root of 3 times x minus 5, that would be correct. But it would just be easier if we could, instead of all that, before we take the square root, Let's just get the square thing by itself. So we'll divide by 3. It's a whole lot easier. You can just get to take the square root. Let's not complicate things. Let's get the thing that is square by itself, all alone, so that we can take the square root of it and, and not have to worry about all the extra stuff that we have to think about. 
You take the square root. What's the square root of x minus 5 squared? x minus 5, right? Just, if you take the square root of something that's being squared, you just get that thing, x minus 5. And what do we have over here when we take the square root of 25? Plus or minus 5. So you have two possibilities. This maybe comes out to be 5, or this comes out to be negative 5. We solve both cases. x minus 5, we add 5 to both sides, we get x is 10. Here we get x is negative 10. 